And one thing that we see in many different ancient civilizations is certain numbers popping up. And I've Absolutely. loved your work on that. Well, see, this was this was another one of the things that that drew me into this, to exploring this possibility. And I insist it's only a possibility, which I believe is worthy of exploration. You know, I'm not some kind of guru claiming that this is a fact. I'm somebody following my instincts in an inquiry into the past. One of the things that led me into that inquiry was material that I came across while I was writing The Sign and the Seal, the book about the Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia. Another was being confronted by the Great Pyramid of Giza for the first time, which happened when I was writing The Sign and the Seal. But third and perhaps most important was reading Hamlet's Mill by Giorgio de Santillana and Hertha von Deschend. Now, back in the 60s, high-level scholars were a whole lot more high-level than high-level scholars today. I mean, Santillana, Giorgio de Santillana and Hertha von Deschend, he was professor of the history of science at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She was the professor of the history of science at Frankfurt University. This was the 1960s. They were very open-minded inquirers. And with that openness of mind, they went back into myth and tradition all around the world. And they found again and again and again the same imagery cropping up and the same numbers. And the imagery in one form or another was of a kind of whirling, turning churn, a mill, if you like, uh, grinding or a grindstone. Um, that's the, the imagery. It's a rotating process. Uh, and it can be it can be visualized in various ways. It, it's the serpent Vazuki wrapped, wrapped around Mount Mandera in Angkor Wat with gods and demons pulling on each end of the serpent and churning the milky ocean. Um, or it can be Horus and Set in the, the scene wrongly interpreted as the uniting of the two lands where they're clearly turning a drill uh, together. Uh, and that then combined with numbers, and those those numbers are all based on the number 72. This is not my discovery or my investigation. I'm reporting what Santillana Avondeshin reported and investigated in Hamlet's Mill and which had a profound effect on my work. And fundamentally what they're saying is that this was an ancient language, uh, astronomical language, that contained hard data about the phenomenon called the precession of the equinoxes, the, what, which is supposed by astronomers today to result from a wobble on the axis of the Earth. Because the Earth is the viewing platform from which we observe the stars, changes in the orientation of that viewing platform uh, change the star field, change the time of year at which particular stars rise, for example. They might not rise on the equinox 2,000 years ago, but they might rise on the equinox today because of that, 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 that wobble. Um, and... They argued that there was an ancient system of knowledge, of detailed knowledge concerning the precession of the equinoxes. They used a codified system of symbols uh, and that it expressed it through a system of rounded numbers. And those numbers are based on the number 72, which is the rounded number of years in which one degree of precession takes to unfold. Uh, and and um, 25,920 years is 360 degrees of precession. Uh, and in between, you get all kinds of other numbers. 2,160, that's 30 degrees of precession. That's effectively one house of the zodiac, uh, the, the stars that hold the sun on the, on the spring equinox, changing down, down the ages. So they argued that, and they attributed it to what they called some almost unbelievable ancestor civilization that had first begun to understand the world in terms of number and measure, had originated this system, and that later cultures, including the Sumerians, the so-called first civilization, the later cultures had been the inheritors of this knowledge, including the ancient Egyptians, including many others, including in far away Mexico and South America as well, a globally distributed system of ideas, um, encoding specific astronomical knowledge, which supposedly was not discovered until the time of the Greeks, around 2,100 years ago, but in the estimation of Santillana and Vendeshend, was thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years older than that. Uh, so that, you know, had, 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 had a great effect on me as, as, as well in my, in my work. 
Yeah, I've I've been intimidated to read Hamlet's Mill, but I it's on my list. But it's these, an intimidating yeah. read. I, I mean, everybody has to be warned on this. Um, it's it's a project to read Hamlet's Mill. Um, it take it takes time. I, I I've read it several times, and I still find new new things in it. Um, but it's not to be confused with entertainment. It's, it's it's really quite hard work, but it's worth it. It's worth persevering, and it's worth and it's worth at the same time respecting the openness of mind of those two scholars back in the nineteen sixties. Who even then it was a revolutionary idea, um, and 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 now it's an idea that's almost completely ignored by by archaeologists, which I think is a pity. Well, I think numbers are a, a clue into something much deeper. Um, well, in this case, they're they, they're. Perhaps there could be other explanations for this constant repetition of the sequence of numbers. Look, it's 72. Half of 72 is 36. 72 plus 36 is 108. 108 divided by 2 is 54. These are the kind of numbers that keep on cropping up again and again and again in very ancient myths all around the world. And they're all numbers that are generated by the cycle of precession. Uh, and they're all very frequently accompanied by this this same imagery. So it it looks it looked to them and it looks to me like there was an ancient civilization. I'm going to call it a civilization. Please, my detractors will immediately add on airplanes, you know, flying ships, temples, pillar. I don't know. I'm just saying that a civilize a civilization that was more advanced than they give credit to for the people of the Ice Age. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not. I'm not imposing upon it any ideas about whatever kind of machinery it had or whatever its level of our kind of technology it had. I'm suggesting it was a very different civilization to our own, but there are bits and pieces of evidence which said it knew stuff that human beings were not supposed to know during the Ice Age. And part of that stuff is knowledge of the precession of the equinoxes. And another part of that stuff is ancient maps, which um, are copied from even older maps, which were copied from even older source maps now lost. Those maps contain accurate relative longitudes. That's another thing. Those maps show the world very often as it looked during the last ice age with much larger land masses than we have today and good relative longitudes. Our civilization didn't solve the longitude problem until the 18th century. So what I'm saying is, Possibly, 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 we've got the history of science a bit wrong, just as Santidiana and von Deschen powerfully argued in Ham Hamlet's Mill, that there's a missing chapter, that there was a culture back there in the Ice Age which got to grips with problems that later technological cultures didn't solve until relatively recently. Antarctica appears on those maps. Antarctica. Our culture didn't discover it until 1820. So what's it doing on maps drawn in the 1500 based on much older source maps? You know, what's it doing there? It's very hard to explain. Right, the Piri Reis map. Well, the Piri Reis map is the least good example. Uh, mm. Yes, it does. It does uh, arguably show an extension of South America into into an ice band Antarctica. It does arguably show that, but but much more much much more effective is the is the Orontius Phineas map. Um, uh, which which uh, puts Antarctica in exactly the right place uh, at the tip of South America and at the tip of South Africa, where it belongs, much larger than it is today. Um, and and um, there's an interesting legend written on that map by the printer about how this map uh, reveals information that hitherto had been hidden in darkness. Uh, and that was unknown to some of the great geographers of the past, but that had hitherto been hidden in darkness. Well, one can put many interpretations on that, but the interpretation I put on that is that the source map had been hidden away for a long time and was was rediscovered uh, in 1500s, 1600s, thereabouts, or perhaps earlier. Perhaps, perhaps one may speculate. The Library of Alexandria, what's the true story of the Library of Alexandria? What was really in that? Was was material taken out of the Library of Alexandria when it went through several several catastrophes, I believe, but but was material shipped to Constantinople, for example? Was some stuff taken saved from the Library of Alexandria and taken off to 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 the capital of the of the Eastern Roman Empire? Uh and, and kept there for a few hundred years until the time of the Crusades. There was a crusade that 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 entered Constantinople. Um 
Is that when these maps came back into global circulation? I'm interested in mysteries like these. Uh, you know, there may be there may be nothing to them, but I love to follow them and and pursue them and see and see where they lead and see what poss possibilities they might open open up. And I, I think archaeologists can 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 do what they like. At the very least, I would prefer not to be constantly smeared and lied about. But uh, my, my my advice to archaeology would be to be just to a little bit more open to the other voices of the past. Of course, the material artifacts, the, the, the arrowheads and the bone tools, of course, these are important. They're very important. But keep your ears open for other messages from the past too. It's not only limited to material artifacts. 